All right, um, we seem to be live, I think. Let me know if you guys can't hear me or anything. So today we're, we're outside. Um, I had all intentions of showing you a full demo with the solar panels, but I will still show you the solar panels, just we, the sunlight is almost gone. I had to go all the way up to um, Boston Spa, New York today, and I only just came back. So I have here my iPhone and my DJI gimbal here which is kind of all crooked but we're going to um, uh, I'm going to show you around well, I'm not going to show you around the compound but I'm going to show you around the, um, the system here I hope this is not too crooked come on he has a mind of his own you know oh jeez come on okay come on man all right um okay Da -da -ding, ding ding okay and we have this here it's a clip on okay now let me bring up the stream on this one and we're gonna do something a little we're going to go to the um thing so with the ecoflow generator you can charge AC, charge batteries and output AC from Delta Pro. Not only Delta Pro, but also the generator itself. All right. All right. And um, got to go in the browser here. Paste, copy, pasta. Okay. All right. Okay. One, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. Camera and mic, audio. Um, okay. Well, camera. Okay. All right. I'm going to use the back camera. Okay. I'll switch to the camera. Okay. Okay. Uh, phone. Interested, yeah. Okay. okay. Woo! Okay. All right. Okay. So we're here now, and, um, yeah, you see all my stuff here. So I'm going to switch to this one. I'm going to remove this other one here, like this. And, um, got it. Okay. Right. So welcome to Wanted Township, New Jersey. This is where I live. This is my house. This is my barn. And these are the neighbors who are going to be on YouTube. All right. <laughs> All right. So I have here my Tesla. You guys ask about the size of this solar panel. Okay. So this is the back of the Tesla Model S. And you can actually see the, um, see the solar panel there. Now, you notice that normally in the back of the Tesla, you have a little um, board here. Well, it, this solar panel is about the same size, okay? And you can pull it out, you know, like this. I have my Iceco JP40 and the remainders of a birthday cake that I got. My birthday's coming up. Okay, um, let me remove this and I'm going to show you a practical little hands-on demo of what we're going to be doing here okay all right uh, dji and then let's see here camera oops camera um camera okay all right let me change camera mic camera Right. Okay. So back here, I don't know if you can see the whole Delta Pro system. I have it laid out there. I'm going to show you some things. But people ask about the solar panel. How do you transport the solar panel? Okay. So I don't know if you can see here or hear me. This is kind of heavy, but you get this in here like this. And you got a shoulder strap so you could carry it like a big ass handbag. Okay. 
carry it around like this. See? It's really not bad at all. Okay? That's how you carry it around your solar panel. Now, um, it is like a little, but it's big. It's huge. It's like four feet, you know? Four feet. Right. Now, let me show you how I can set this up. I'm going to set this camera on the ground so you guys can see how I set this up. Okay? So, I'm going to have to switch this camera again. God, it's a pain in the neck. Back camera. Okay. Oh, come on. Okay. All right. Right. Okay. I'm going to aim things this way so you can see here. I'm going to do a little. Ugh. Should I just lose the stupid gimbal? Gimbal. Okay. All right. You know what it is? The microphone cord is, is pulling. Okay. So here we are. Right. Right. I don't know how much of this you guys can see here. But this comes in a little zipper piece like this. Okay. And you unzip the piece. Unzip, okay. and have that, and then you have another zip on the other side. Okay, so that's unzippered, and then you have this thing flip out like this. Let me bring this up a little bit. You know, I have an upcoming video about a radio and TV museum, and would you know, none of this was possible back then. They had big camera setups with all sorts of stuff. Okay. So you notice, here you have the panel, and people have been asking about the specs. So let me show you the specs. Okay. Can you see that label? probably get a little closer right okay so the specs as I read out to you 400 watts 41 volts 9.8 amps right that's a VMP and IMP the open circuit voltage is 48 volts and the short circuit current is 11 amps um, yeah and it's monocrystalline I don't know who the OEM is but um, it's probably some, uh, um, you know, some uh, solar panel company from the Far East. Has to be. But um, they do um, have a, um, they're pretty good quality, I must say. Yes, you have to be careful. Okay. Okay. So next, and I'm going to flip this up a little bit. Hello, Jerry Garcia. How are you, man? Good. All right. Okay. So here. All right. So one thing about this panel, and Eagle Flow has this arrangement with the case, right? You see here the case is, um, the top is rigid like this. The bottom is all floppy like this. So you really, you know, it's kind of, kind of some arrangement here. You unfurl the solar panel like this. This is really a two person job, but one person could do it. And you do like that, okay? And you carefully the bottom here, you just very carefully, hope I'm not blocking, flip it on one, and 
and number two. Okay. All right. Good workout. Okay. Because this is heavy. Next, you could kind of, I don't know if you want to pull or push. I don't like doing that. I'll save that for last. The top here has some clips. You clip it like this. Uh, I'll go on to question this now. And um, then you pull it back. This and this we straighten it up. So let me check the chest. Yeah, they're much they are much bigger, I'll tell you. Um they're they're huge, they're humongous. They're not light, but they're portable, which is what people um love to see, I think. So this kind of is a little hokey getting straight. Um I don't think you could ideally get the straight out like this. I mean, the other EcoFlow panels have the same issue. So you get it the best you can. Let me pull up the camera here. Okay. And I do here. Okay. Yeah. You see? And it comes with the MC4 connectors here like this. Right, this is a EcoFlow junction box. It comes with a standard. It's a good quality MC4, I think. It's labeled positive and negative. You see here, and um, pretty good. Um, and then, you know, you can angle this to the back to catch sunlight. Unfortunately, as you can see here in New Jersey, we're not California, we're not Florida. So we don't have a lot of sunshine here, but you know, this sucks. Okay. <laughs> right. All right. Okay. Um, yeah, see, I have my ice cold in here. And I have a EcoFlow River here. Okay. Nice. All right. That is the solar panel. That's pretty nice. Um, you know what? The longevity of them. So portable panels, I don't really see them lasting long, long term. But... Um, this one seems pretty solid, I think. Um, time will tell. This one, I've left this outside. I actually left this outside in a thunderstorm. Nothing happened. It's kind of, um, you know, it's kind of durable, I would say. And, um, you know, so I'm going to face it front to answer some more questions. Because um, this is hopefully work out here. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so that is, a, that is an overview of the solar panel. As I mentioned, 48 volts, right? And um, 48 volts open cell, uh, 41 volts, um, you know, uh, kind of um, the the uh, maximum power point, and um, you know, it will. Um, you have the 9.8 and 11.8 amps of current. It looks slightly flexible. It is slightly flexible, yes. Right, and um, yeah, like I mentioned, it is like a little handbag. Okay, now, um, even though Kickstarter campaign's over tomorrow, I want to do a, a live stream about the, um, about the, um, the, the solar panels. I also have Harbor Freight solar panels. Let me see if you still hear me when I go over to the front here. It's getting windy. All right. And, um, all right. Let me go back to the back camera. Okay. Yeah, you can still hear me. Okay. Let's see my messy yard. I have a lawn service, but they're, they're good guys. Um, yeah. All right. Here, you see my front. Here, you see here. Now, you see here, this is Harbor Freight solar panels, right? These are actually not bad. These are 100 watts each. I've been testing these out. And um, these are rigid panels. I got them on sale for like um, $79. So, you know, they're kind of, they're pretty good. All right. And um, $79 each. 
Okay. Okay. So that is that. Yeah, that's the um so two can be used in series for 96 volts. Yes, they can. They can. They absolutely can. Um so the funny thing is I have a parallel array of um I have two S2P of the Harbor Freight panels and I have this um EcoFlow panel in um, series with that and it works perfect. I get almost 800 watts. I get like 750 at most watts out of it and this is the fall so you know the sunshine is not really that good. Okay. All right. Um, next one here we have the um, EcoFlow um, equipment here. Okay. Here we have the smart generator. Okay. And here we have Delta Pro, right? I, um, whoa, okay. Right. Yeah. So I actually just turn on the smart generator here. And it's charging um, the EcoFlow Delta Pro via DC. Set this to do it automatically. Right? It's push button start, but you can set it in the app. The exhaust is in the back. Okay. I have uh, this handy little thing in my jig here. Right? So let's check decibel readings. So from like five feet away, this is in the back of the unit, okay? 10 feet away. About 20, 21 feet away. Okay. So about 68, 70, maybe a little more. Yeah. And that is with outside ambient noise. Um, so the um, the generator, actually, let me shut it off. First. Well, you know what? I'll leave it on a little bit. So right now it's doing 15 cents watts. I have an EU6500, right? Yes, it does have an automatic choke. And yes, only one external battery can be used when the generator is connected. Yeah, you know, um, so the generator is a Rato um, or Rato. It's a um, Chinese manufacturer. They're, um, you know, they make a lot of small engines. They're um, a Rato R80, okay? And they basically, um, you know, they're, they're very, they're very popular. They're, you know, they're, they're obviously not, you know, like a top of line Honda, but um, they've been getting better, believe it or not. So, um, you know, um, what else? Let's see here. Yes. So the EcoFlow generator does have a, I'll put like a battery and it uses a battery input. Just like, um, so I'll show you this in a second. Let me shut it off because of the noise. Okay. Ooh, a little backfire there. <laughs> um, right. So this um, this actually looks. It sounds the same as my EU sixty five hundred, which is the sixty five hundred watt. The sixty five hundred is a little louder, right? So, yeah, you have the exhaust in the back there. You have this. Um, they give you a smart generator adapter here. And this, this actually is the same cable that goes in EcoFlow Max. I have two heaters here running. Let me shut it off. I think I drained the battery enough. Okay. And, um, yeah, I haven't really set up the automatic stuff, but that's in the app. 
Okay. Um, I'm going to go inside the unit a little bit. Um, yeah, so the generator does output DC, and there is actually an AC port on the front, too. I'm going to go over that in a second here. So you see in the front here, you have the, the, the port is the same as the max. And the AC port is the same. It just automatically came on because it reached a threshold. Um, yes, you can charge a Delta using AC plug, correct? Yeah. As a matter of fact, the Kickstarter team, you know, there was a lot of disappointment that um, there was not a lot of accessories for um, um, for the Delta, um, the original Delta. You know, people were getting on the on the Kickstarter and they were complaining that, oh, they left this out, Ecofone left this out. But then the Kickstarter team, they said basically no. Um, you can use the 400 watt solar panel, or you can use the um, the smart generator on AC. So there are accessories available, right? Okay. Um, I want to shut this off to show you inside the generator. I know some people like tear down. I'm probably gonna have to move my. Um, okay. Um, one second, let me answer that, but let me move this first. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to shut this completely off because I don't want it turning on. All right. Okay. And disconnect this for safety too. Okay. So um, yeah. Right. So here I have um, I have my computer here. I can answer questions too. Okay. If the Delta Pro is powering lows and you plug AC into charge and AC feed through batteries do not get charged, I believe it just throttles back to DC. It doesn't actually um, you know it throttles back. I think it gives priority to the AC. Believe it or not. Okay. Um, that's a good test to do, actually. I should do that. Um, right. That. That. Okay. On the side, you have a pull start. Um, gasoline spillage. I, I suck at gasoline spillage. I, I really, you know, it's kind of like I spill gasoline on this thing. You have a standard gas cap here. And you have, like, a vent in case it's hard to open. You see, you have a strainer and everything in there. On the side here, um, you have manual thumb thingies here. All right, we're gonna go inside of this. Okay, so first thing I wanna show you here, they put foam on this here to deaden the sound a little bit, okay? This is not a quiet engine, but they put foam, which is good. You have your standard um, oh, I want to show you something nice here. This is going to, you guys going to like this. This here is the battery. Okay, this is hot. This here is about the size of a pack of cigarettes, right? And this here is a lithium iron phosphate battery. It's not a um, lead acid battery. So this is really compact. This fits inside there. And you, they have this SAE plug down here that um, shows you um, that you, you have to plug in first when you actually get um, the unit. This is the carburetor here, and this is the air um, cleaner unit. It's hot, I gotta remember that. This is the oil cap. It takes less than a gallon of oil. It's a, um, you know, it's an R80i, okay? Rato R80i engine which is, um, like I mentioned, it's a Chinese um, 79cc engine. But it's, it's, it's not bad, you know, it's not bad. You have all the electronics here in the front um, and sensors here too. 
you have here, it's an overhead valve engine. I believe it looks like overhead valve. And you see a lot of um, stuff in there. So this is inside. Steve Steve Vandeman actually had a, you know, he put a full frontal picture. I'll put a full frontal picture of it too. They have like clips here to clip it on. And let me see what else in Q&A is asking. I really need two people to do this. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's correct. Only if rate of output is greater than or equal charge input. Okay. Does it give you an alert if fuel is low? Um, so the front, they actually have the traditional EcoFlow style gauge. Um, the EcoFlow style gauge, like, you know, that you see on Delta Pro, right? The traditional EcoFlow style gauge with these little bar, these circle here, that will be for fuel. Okay, since I have it not connected, I can show you here. So you see here, it's just, it's a float gauge, most likely it's a float gauge. This is half fuel, half tank of gas, okay? Um, it tells you the number of hours here, traditional EcoFlow display hours. And it's fall leaves are falling here. Um, I'll put in watts, number of hours runtime. Carbon monoxide shutoff, okay? Um, that's for safety. You don't want um, carbon monoxide in your house. Oil alert for low oil. You have electric start. You, have, you can turn the AC on and off. Um, it By default, it's on. And this is your Wi-Fi. This goes through the app as well. I want to show you some of the app functions just now. All right. Here on the side, you have your on and off switch. And this pull starter, I verified that it works. I don't want to pull it, but it, it's easy. It's easy to pull. I could pull it. Okay. People ask about the exhaust. Okay. So the exhaust, they have the muffler here. You could probably attach something to this and put a hose to go outside. I mean, my official recommendation is don't gamble with your life. But if you know what you're doing, then you know what? It's on you. Okay. Um, it does steal an extra battery port. I kind of wish EcoFlow would make like a Y cable or something, but who knows? Maybe they'll, they'll do that sometime. I still have one extra battery port here. I think this is so hard to open. Jeez, where's my knife when I need it? Um, okay. Yeah. I mean, you see, you all seen the reviews of this, right? I mean, uh, you know, Jehu has one. You have um, Robotech has a review, and um, um, Silver Symbol has reviews of this. You know, I'm getting down to the nitty gritty here, so. We're trying to see what's inside here. Oh man, this is a stubborn piece of. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, this ain't coming off. I'll deal with it some other time. But um, yeah, it does take an extra battery port. This they they should change the label on this to say 1600 watt solar input and such. Right. Uh, let's see what else people are asking. Okay, oil alert is low. Uh, would have been better if they were on it. Well, yeah, everybody's asking for propane. Um, we had that in, in discussion with them, and um, you know, I don't know what they're saying about that, but um, I think it's a good idea to run on propane. Okay, uh, what else? Let me see here. I'll do front camera. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, flow delta range of, yeah. Just need a gasket kit. A gasket kit, you probably need to have like a different carb jet and stuff like that, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, that's not hard to rectify, to be honest. <laughs> It isn't, trust me. Um, I have a story I'll tell you sometime about testing. Um, when can you please test charge with AC cord? So, um, yeah, um, this has been covered extensively. Delta Pro is a pass-through because EcoFlow 
and I've been inside the unit. I've actually had to, to um, do some, you know, my own stuff inside there to, you know, to test some stuff. The inverter board is used as a battery charger. So they shut off the inverter completely and then they, um, they use that as a battery charger. They have relays, bypass relays. You could see in the Hobotech testing, and I confirm this, once you hit 1800 watts, you go beyond that, it shuts off. When you use the infinity port, um, the infinity port will shut off all AC charging. When you use the um, uh, EV charging, it will shut off, I'm sorry, it will shut off all AC output as well too, right? Um, yeah, you know what? Uh, I could probably run down to Home Depot or Lowe's and get a, or the RV store. They have RV stores around here. They have a lot of campgrounds around here. I'll probably get um thing. Does it shut down? I've never been able to get this too hot. I mean, I run my, um, my legal limit amateur radio amplifier on this. I run, um, I run heaters. You know, I try to blow this thing up and not, you know, it didn't overheat, you know? Um, does the 400 watt solar panel come? So as I showed you guys here, the 400 watt solar panel, it's a typical EcoFlow kickstand, okay? They use the case as a kickstand. I'm not sure I like this design, but this is what they offer. And I really think they need to be reinforcing this a little bit, but it is what it is and it works. Okay. Um, you know, you can get this kind of straight. I think though it's an exercise in futility probably, but it will, um, it will work. I would back this with something else. And realistically, if you're getting the solar tracker, it doesn't matter. Okay. But, um, yeah. What else are we talking about here? Uh, let's see. Hey, Kitty loves Coca-Cola. That's my daughter. Yeah. You know what? You know, Joe, I, I kind of, um, I kind of struggled myself with it. I wouldn't lie. I wouldn't lie. I struggled myself opening it up, you know? So like, you know, yeah. I mean, I would imagine other female would have problem with it too. But it's a big, I mean, you can't ignore the laws of physics, really. Um, their option, the Harbor Freight panels are actually pretty nice to use, too. They come with a kickstand built in. You can use that. And those are, um, those are typically on sale sometime. Can you connect two Delta Pros and act as one unit versus the extra battery? No. No. I, I, you cannot do that. Um, Frugal Repair. Hey, thank you. Nice to see you here. Um, EcoFlow, are you out there? Okay. Uh, how long will it take to charge the Delta Pro up? So this is 1800 Watts. Um, they have it in the official spec. It's probably like an hour and a half, I would say hour and a half to 1.8 hours. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. Yeah. Let me know. Okay. Let me know. Um, that, that'll be an interesting test. Uh, I've been kind of, you know, I'm, I have to run a circuit test on this. It's not bonded neutral. So Drew Peterson here, ham radio operator, any issues with RF noise? So Delta Pro, I've shown in the videos and I, was, um, I wanna show you guys a special for ham radio too, is um, the actual Delta Pro unit, the MPPT controller is encased in a metal cage. So this is good thinking on their part because this helps tamp down the RF noise greatly. I seen. I tried another inverter and another um, um, uh, MPPT controller, and um, they were useless on amateur radio. This one, it does have a little bit of narrow, very narrow noise. You'll find on one or two frequencies per band, you'll find a little birdie, right? And you will be able to actually suppress that down to a negligible level using ferrite beads, right? So that works really well. Um, you know, I had initially expressed this concern to EcoFlow and engineering, and apparently they took took it back and they, they made sure that they're not um, doing anything, you know, like that. I really like the the, the, the the enclosed cage and all of that stuff in there, right? Can you add extension to the generator muffler? You know, um, I'll let you guys be the judge of that. Let me show that again so you know. 
it looks like you can. I mean, it's the muffler screwed on, so it's probably possible. And this is like a standard 79cc Rato engine. So, you know, it's like, this is the muffler here, okay? This is the muffler. You have the spark arrestor there. It's probably still hot. It's screwed on. You could probably unscrew that and make your own thing. I'm sure some fabricator will come up with something neat and a kit. I'm sure there will be aftermarket stuff. Um, that will be so neat. I imagine EcoFlow is probably not doing that for the safety certification. They don't want to be responsible for somebody um, um, poisoning themselves with carbon monoxide, but they have a carbon monoxide detector on it, which is good. So um, let's see. Yep, that was a question. Soundproof enclosure, yeah. I, I really want them to have a soundproof enclosure. I've been discussing that with them. Um, you know, they've kind of, that, that's a good idea to, to have, um, you know. We're actually doing a lot of, um, you know, ideas bouncing around. I can't disclose a lot of uh, of it, of course, because it's, um, you know, they're, they're the products under development. But they have a lot of, they listen to the community a lot. They, they have a lot of interest in community um, things. So keep it coming. I mean, you know, I keep, you know, telling them things that the community has and Steve and um, Ben as well on the community, they tell us to, they, they, they go to um, EcoFlow and, and give them all the info. So, you know, anything else, anybody else? Um, you know, I, I, you have me here for probably another half an hour. <laughs> I want to test the app, but I have to figure out to do that without um, knocking my camera offline. Can you add extra batteries? And that are not EcoFlow, like a few Battleborn. Technically, you can. The DC MPPT input, and I'm sure, um, you know, you can. The DC MPPT input is 11 to 150 volts at 15 amps. I'm sure you can add an extra battery pack through there. Um, and to be honest, to be quite honest, it's probably going to behave similar to the official EcoFlow extra batteries, because all they do is they connect it to the internal batteries and have some smarts to control with BMS and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Um, the RVDC plug. Yeah, so I do have the RVDC plug here. Um, being a ham radio operator, I do have a ton of Anderson power poles. And you will see here. The only thing I didn't like is that this orientation here is vertical and not horizontal. Like traditional, you know, like amateur equipment and such. So this is you know, this is like stacked on top of each other, which is no big deal. I just make an adapter cable, but it's just non-standard for me anyway. Um, I ran this up to 25 amps on my, with uh, using amateur radio equipment, um, you know, and it, it ran okay. Just there was a little bit of voltage drop, but it ran okay. I was a little, um, you know, hesitant on that, but um, this is your RV output. Okay, and yeah, you know that. Yeah, I think that needs improvement. It, I definitely think that it. It. Um, you know, I got. I. I didn't go more. I did go to like thirty amps, but I went to like twenty five, and it was most comfortable at like twenty five. I think a thirty or on the margins, really. You know, I don't know what they had in mind in terms of um, the. Um, uh, the applications of this, of that 30 amp output, you know, but, um, we'll see. Have you tried? Yes. So actually, yeah. So the interesting thing is, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you exactly what I did. Um, I want to do this in live stream or maybe a, a separate video sometime. Okay. So the Harbor freight panels, what I did was I have two S2P, two serial, two parallel right and um those panels those panels are actually similar inspect they're 24 volt panels they're 24 volt panels they're rated at 100 watts okay they're actually a little over 100 watts because i could get a little over 100 watts from them um they if I do two series, two parallel, I will match the 400 volt panel. And then when I connect that in series to the 400 volt panel, I get almost 800 watts. So I get a 400 watt with the Harbor Freight panels and I get 400 watt with this EcoFlow panel. And that has been, um, that's really, that's really neat. I think, you know, 
and occasionally they go on sale. I don't know if Inside Track Club might have, you know, again, or you might have coupons. I know Harbor Freight did away with the coupons. So, um, you know, that's kind of, that's kind of um, interesting. However, I think if you're doing those up to 1600 watts, it'll be a waste of money. I think you're going to get much better value with um, panels, with residential or commercial panels. Uh, and I also think that you're going to want to over panel a little bit because, I mean, especially if you're in northern latitude like I am, if you're in California, you have an abundance of sunshine or, or Las Vegas, you know, like Will Prowse or, um, you know, down in Texas or something, right? Or the Caribbean, where I'm from. <laughs> so, um, you know, let's see here. Um, uh, have you tried the, okay, I did that. If you're a radio ham who's also in the brew narrow and drink, what about turning dregs? <laughs> if it burns, it burns. I don't know. You know, you got to ask about brewing. You got to ask um, Jason, Ham Radio 2.0. Do you think you will make Infinity Adapter for Generator? I don't know. Um, they haven't told me that. Let's see here. Do I have the smart home panel? I can talk about the smart home panel. I might end up testing one. Um, I did order one for myself. I did back one. Um, I'm very thrilled and excited about that product because that one can not only give me home backup, but it can give me um, emerge, um, daily power. So let me show you what I currently have for backup, okay? And I'll tell you how the smart home panel is different. Okay, you can see a lot of things here. I got to tell the landscaping crew to come do a cleanup here, okay? Right, so here is Sussex Rural Electric Cooperative Meter. And here... I have something called a Generlink, and this has a plug below it here, and you plug in a special cord below here, and that goes to a 1430 that plugs into a generator. What you do is you switch off your main, you plug in this, you plug in your generator, turn on your generator, and then switch back on your main, and then you transfer it to generator power. Um, the smart home panel, I'll tell you about the smart home panel. Okay, um, the smart home panel, I think is EcoFlow's most exciting part about this system. And I'll tell you why. The other guys like, you know, the blue and Jack and you know, the rest of them, they're not gearing this toward home. They're gearing this towards van life people and RV and stuff like that, right? EcoFlow is saying, let's take this to your home, okay? Yeah, you can pay Elon, you know, mega bucks for a big solar and power wall. Or you can buy a Delta Pro, a pair of Delta Pros, you know, and build your system incrementally small. You can add portable solar panels with a tracker. The tracker is a little expensive, though. Um, you can add your own solar panels. And um, you can then, um, um, you know, build solar into your house for cheap and you have emergency backup. The smart home panel, you know, I've been I've been trying to, to talk to EcoFlow and find out exactly how it operates because there seemed to be a little bit of conflicting information. Um, I think I'm not going to find out exactly until I have one in my hands. What they the initial thing I was told is that if you plug in two Delta Pros, it will basically use from one Delta Pro unless it's 240 volt, and then it will bring in a second one when load increase above a certain level. I think this is the most efficient way. However, um, some were saying, you know, that how you get five circuits on one and five circuits on the other, which I think we could rule that out right away because um, what they told me is that you can definitely run 10 120 volt circuits or 220 if you're in Europe um, circuits on a single smart home panel. We'll, I'll definitely need to find that out because I think that's... Um, that's 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 going to be critical it does do 240 volt right like you can actually pair a pair of breakers during the commissioning phase like you get a pair of the the 10 circuits and you do the split phase with that so you could run like your well pump i have a well i have well water here um you run your well pump your um uh, amateur radio amplifier <laughs> you know i'm a ham i'm a nut, nutty ham radio operator uh or you run um other things 
So, you know, um, the, but there's, the, if, once I get my hands on a smart home panel, boy, I will be definitely, you know, demoing that. I'll be marching down to the permit office with, with camera in hand and showing you how to get a permit for it and everything. All right, let me see here. Yeah, uh, 30 amp is peak, not continuous. Okay, that's that, that makes sense then. Um, let's see, Radio Ham, who is, okay, I think I do, da, da, da. Yeah, I talked about smart home panel. How is the RFI on the DC output? So um, the RFI on the DC output is not bad at all. It, it's, I don't really detect much of anything. I cooked it up to my Flex 6700. On the lower bands, like 160 and such, there is a little thing. But, um, you know, the higher bands, they're, you know, like 20 meters, 40 meters and such. There's really not, you know, much. I'm, I run it on my Flex. My Flex has a power pole input. Um, let's see. Heads and the tails should be as good as, yeah. Uh, you know, um, it's a tragedy what's happening to gasoline in the U.S. Um, they're, they're putting all this ethanol in it. And they're, you know, I guess it's a big um, giveaway to the corn industry. They're putting... Um, ethanol and all the gasoline corn ethanol and that is messing up two stroke engines big time i had one or two engines absolutely destroyed the gaskets carburetor gaskets from um, um from ethanol fuel yeah okay cool um let's see ups feature when it runs uh, ac so um like i mentioned the ac um the ups feature Okay, so we're talking about the built-in UPS in Delta Pro. The built-in UPS in Delta Pro is where it has a bypass relay, but there is a 30, 25 to 30 millisecond delay once it detects a power loss. This, I think, I, I suspect it has to do with the fact that the inverter is being reused as a battery charger. And because of that, they have a switch over time. Um, you know, but that, that could be the reason I'm not 100% sure on that. I don't have any inside information. This is just a guesstimate based on my rudimentary reverse engineering of the unit. So, um, it, but yeah, it does do a pass through from the grid. It will not work with infinity port. They're assuming with infinity port, you're, you're using, the, um, using the smart home panel, which will provide a backup, okay? Which will provide a UPS functionality for 120 and 240 volt. They want you to do that. It will not work with double voltage hub, okay? And I don't expect it to because of the way split phase works. Uh, let's see here. Can you, um, does it really bypass the battery? Yes, it does fully bypass the battery. There is, um, the battery is charging, but it's not working with the inverter. Can you skip a transfer switch? I'm not sure what you mean with that. I could use it on my general link, okay? All right, so let me set up back the, this camera and show you guys the app. I want to see if this actually works well um, with the smart generator. I need to put back the smart generator cover on. Just give me a second here. Okay. 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 Bada bing. Hmm. That is this clips. Gotta make sure I put them on. I wish I put better glue on these labels, these safety labels, but I guess they're coming off anyway. This cover is a little bit to be desired, but okay. There we go. Back on. All right, um, let me see what else I could do here. Okay, let me just run quick and get my um, my computer here and I'm gonna be here. Okay. Oh boy, do I have to, I have to clean those vines off the barn? There's no animals in the barn anyway. 
So UPS functionality does not work with double voltage hub. Like you can't charge from AC at the same time using double voltage hub. It will be completely off. All right. Um, let me see here. Camera mic, Epicam, FaceTime. I'm just going to use my FaceTime camera. Oh, what's going on here? I don't like StreamYard. I'm going to go back to using OBS, you know. Okay. Good. Okay. All right. Uh, Add to stream. stream. You, you see, see two of me. me. Not too long. Yeah. Okay. okay, so I'm going to remove this one here, all right, and you just see one of me, okay, and remove this here, try not for it to scream, okay, so let me see here, so I got my iPhone 12 Pro, um, let's see here, uh, I don't need this mic anymore, hmm, all right, let me shut off StreamYard for this. Okay, so what are we going to do now? Okay, um, the microphone. Okay, good. Internal microphone built in. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring up the EcoFlow app. Okay, and I see Delta Pro is quite thirsty here. It's in need of some electricity. Okay, so let's. Um, So what I've done, and this thing starts automatically, what I've done is um, I plug back in Smart Generator and it automatically started up right as we're, you know, you see, and it's starting. So by the way, I named all my Delta Pros, my, my EcoFlow equipment after rivers in my old country, okay? One second. Yeah, I figured I'd have a better time with the microphone if I faced, um, you know, um, yeah. So, yeah, so you can use it with without a transfer switch. You just need to connect every device. It's going to be a lot of extension cords. <laughs> okay. Um, if you So if you do with the 30 amp plug, um, I haven't tested the 30 amp plug to see if it, it'll it'll work. It, I suspect it will while you're charging, but only up to 1800 watts. Okay, all right. So yeah, so it's, you see here now it's doing input 1608 watts. Um, the generator actually has its own control here, right? And it's a very simple control. I could I could set this up here. It says work mode. Um, manual which is um, the um, normal which is the full speed right or I could do auto which is basically eco throttle so it will um, it will work that way so here is charging up but I want to do this here uh, go back to the Delta Pro app this is doing this live Okay. Probably Wi-Fi on this phone. Okay, here we go. Right? So here it's getting 16, um, 11 watts and it's charging up. And smart generator on off. I said this charge and discharge level. You can set a minimum and maximum. Okay. So it will come on when it hits 30%. And then it will um, shut off when it reaches 50%, the, gener the generator. Okay. Um, can you connect a different type of generator to the port? 
but will it not have an auto on off? The answer is no. You cannot connect a different type of generator to that um, extra battery port. You can only connect the EcoFlow smart generator. And in the future, you can actually connect the, um, the new um, rooftop solar MPPT controller. This, that was a community suggestion, by the way. You guys were asking about rooftop solar integration, and they, they decided to go with that. Okay, um, let's see here now. Um, so by the way, AC X boost is on, so I can actually run AC load. So I actually turned on one of the heaters here, and you can actually see here, you see X boost is now on, right? So it's putting out um, 1,459 watts and it's charging. So basically it's using the generator. Yeah, yeah, it's proprietary, correct. Right, and um, yeah. This is going to be so noisy up here, but um, to um can you talk about the x boost okay so x boost as you may know is ecoflow's um technology where they tell you and the way that they market this is that they say you can run it's a little quieter here you can run appliances up to but the light sucks but <laughs> you can run appliances up to um i think it's uh how many watts is it four thousand or something or is it some um, 7000 X boost but um, what X boost does and this is for all the the River Pro the um, the Delta um, Delta Pro the Delta Mini I believe has it too and the um, uh, Delta Max and the River Pro um, what it will do is that once you exceed the maximum continuous rating of the inverter it will then drop the voltage but it will keep the current steady so you know normally due to ohm's law you're keeping um, yeah 4500 watts right normally due to ohm's law when you have a load you have v equals ir right so what's going to happen is that if your load remains the same resistance your um for resistive load which is what it's designed for. The um, as the voltage decreases, the current drawn will will increase. Well, what EcoFlow does is they will hard limit the current, and then the voltage will drop all the way down. The net effect of this is, it's not really you're not really getting more power of the unit, right? Um, what you are doing is basically fooling your appliance into still working while you know at reduced performance uh, while the inverter is not shutting down so where this is most useful it's not going to work for charging your tesla probably not it's not going to work for running an air conditioner it does work for a microwave oven believe it or not it will work best for your toaster okay so what will happen is your toaster now will have access to will be able to run because a regular toaster is like what 1800 watts let's say you have just for craziness you have three toasters running okay um i think that adds up to i don't know um but that adds up to to, to about more than 3600 watts right and then um that toaster 
will, will run at reduced heat because it's getting less power than the maximum amount and then it will um, then um, it will toast your bread but you know it probably won't toast it as good but at least your inverter wouldn't shut down what appliances does it work best with it works best with resistive heating appliances these are appliances that have heating elements right they have like a heating coil they have um, they're not motors because motors are what you call inductive loads where they basically draw a huge amount of power at the beginning and then they um, come back down these will work best with things like toasters irons like clothes irons um, waffle irons things like that toaster ovens I use it on my toaster oven and it'll work with things like that it will kind of work with a microwave oven I don't really recommend it because it might damage the power supply um, and it wouldn't heat as well anyway I think X boost really is a very limited thing it's a last-ditch resort that you have that will provide you with the means to do that task at reduced power you know instead of not doing it at all incandescent lights if you have a lot of incandescent lights they will run but they will be dimmer so you might not you know if let's say you have let's say you have 1200 watts of incandescent lights right for some reason you have 1200 watts of incandescent lights and you run that on a river pro which is 600 maximum x boost you're gonna get probably similar light to 600 watts of incandescent lighting so you will have the same number of light bulbs being lit you'll have you know you'll be able to have let's say 1200 watt light bulbs being hit being lit but it'll probably give you the same light as six of those hundred watt light bulbs so it's a useless feature for that you know but at least if you have that there and you can't disconnect the lights you will be able to um to, to use it um x boost on delta max is 3400 watts yes that actually um that's a good point you know delta max has not been getting a lot of love but it's been you know pretty interesting yeah so the incandescent lights kind of i don't really see that as a use case for incandescent lights one um because um you know it's going to be limited in terms of it's it's actually going to not give you more power right because some people mistakenly think that x boost means yeah i can i can boost this up to 1800 watts without consequence no 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 what you can do is you can fool the appliance into running limping along while your solar generator is still running okay um all right thank you very much for that question that was very educational for the audience i'm going to shut down in a little while but um i want to show you guys how much the the it charged up um let's see here oh i still have this inverter running yikes yeah so what happened is what happened is while i was running the heaters i was d basically siphoning off the power from the smart generator on those heaters so now i need to go and it's got to charge back up from smart generator um nigel nigel's my ham radio friend from trinidad and um, very nice to have him here. Nice to see you, Nigel. Um, smart panel, two pros and four batteries with central air, soft start possible. So um, depends on what ton your central air is. We have a five ton here. Um, five ton, um, my five ton for some reason, we don't have a soft start kit. I think I want to put one in and try it. Um, yeah. And then, um, you know, it will be uh, soft start possible, meaning um, you probably will be able to get away with it. Because I noticed now I have the, um, uh, what you call sense energy device, right? And if I run the central air, uh, I don't want to run it now because I'm charging my car. I mean, I can, but um, a few days ago when I run it, it had a... Uh, let's see here on like last Sunday I ran it it, it went up all the way to like seven eight thousand watts and then it just went down to five thousand as a compressor the lock rotating amps um, you know as the rotor began to spin 
Um, smart panel, two pros and four battery central air, soft start possible. It might be for a small, I, I really wouldn't bet on it for anything higher than a three ton. I really wouldn't. I think a five ton is a stretch, a five ton, you'll probably be only running the five ton on that unit. Um, if anybody does it, I want to see it. I want to see it. Uh, let's see here now. Um, this returns Xboost lets you use high power. Yes, that's true. That is true. Um, higher wattage at, at reduced power. Yeah. Uh, can use 500, 400 watts. So no, you may not. Um, it's not. Those are portable solar panels, and I don't think they're going to meet code, first of all. I think what's going to happen is the rigid panels are better because one they're cheaper right and um, what's going to happen is they're going to um, those flexible panels will probably flap up in the wind they will get you know even though they're weatherproof they're going to have some issues with uh, the sun and the heat and such like that constantly on them you know with rigid panels you want something above the roof so you have ventilation right and then the ventilation will keep the solar panels efficient um, and um, you know so you best you best with rigid panels to be honest and I think with the rigid panels you could get them a lot cheaper how to connect two or more solar panels to the Pro okay you can do a series connection or a parallel connection or a combination of both the, the um, MPPT controller, the solar controller can do a maximum of 15, uh, 15 amps current at 150 volts. So this means you can, you know, but you can do a maximum of 1600 watts on it, okay? 1600 watts. All right. Um, and how you connect these other solar panels, you kind of have to fit the solar panels into that shoebox basically so let's say you have solar and you're looking at the open circuit voltage by the way because that's the voltage that the MPPT controller will first see it will not see the what you call the VMP the maximum power point which is where it's most efficient what you want to do is let's say you have 348 volt panels right and they are if you have 348 volt panels and they're 15 amps, that's perfect because that'll give you some over paneling capability. Um, so you connect them in series. Basically, you connect positive to negative, you daisy chain them, and then you connect them to the Delta Pro. You should, if you're, you know, if you're, once you do that, you should test with a meter, a multimeter, to see how, um, how long they can run. Um, sorry, not how long they can run. Um, how high the voltage is. I'm getting mixed up with somebody else in chat. And um, if you exceed that 150 volts, you can damage the unit. You could probably exceed it by a very little bit. I'm sure EcoFlow built in some oops margin in there. I wouldn't bank on it, you know. Uh, how long can the gas generator run? So it is... Um, I think it's 1.1 gallons. They said in the documentation. I'm not. I'm not really sure. Um, so um, you know, I'm pretty sure it's a, a couple hours, right? It's not going to be at full throttle. It's not going to be more than like two to three hours. I think. Uh, let's see here. They actually the the whole system. They rated the whole system at 25 kilowatt hours. Okay, is it as you exceed the amps? So the amps, <clears throat> the way amp works is that you draw amps and you don't push amps, you push um, volts, right? So voltage basically is the electromotive force. It pushes through. Amps is the current and the load draws the current. So if the load draws more, um, you know, the load will only draw, the MPPT controller, the solar controller, and the batteries will only draw how much it needs, okay? And um, if you have extra capacity, what's going to happen is that when you have full sun, the MPPT controller will essentially ignore, it will not, well, ignore is a way that they term it to people, but you will simply not 
draw the full amount okay what you will do is that you will draw the maximum that the unit is capable of so if you have like 20 amps of solar and the um, you're running it on Delta Pro at 15 amps you're only going to be able to draw most a maximum of 15 amps if you um, if you over voltage right you exceed the voltage you're gonna damage the unit okay um, let's see here an over paneling is a is is a good strategy if you have cloudy days okay like if here and especially in the winter time here too we have a lot of gloomy days so you want if you could get extra solar panels cheap you can over panel and you can get more production out of your setup how does a smart panel interface with a generator EcoFlow or other um, the smart panel does not connect to a generator directly it connects to the Delta Pro via infinity port and the um, the smart generator connects the Delta Pro be the ex the extra battery port how many will how long will it charge a pro on a tank of gas okay so I'm pretty sure this is in the spec here um, let's see here um, I'm pretty sure they, they they told me here oh here it is okay I have here the manual right oh no this is something else um, but they said the whole so let, let me see if I could calculate it here right they said the whole system with the smart generator is 25 kilowatt hours so this means that um, the um, let's see if they have it here actually so on half a tank of gas it says here on the app I could get two hours so I think you're probably going to get on a full tank you're probably going to get close to four hours right and um, yeah right and how long will it charge a pro in a tank of gas I how many times yeah so if it does four hours 1620 there's math involved here um, let's say 1800 watts two hours 3600 so I think you could recharge probably four times it seems two times or four times that's kind of um, I need to research that actually uh, generate no so there's no generator manual it's a it's a PDF I didn't even get a, um, a, a, a printed manual I just got a PDF from Gloria all right no I don't like the Harbor Freight Amorphous the Harbor Freight Amorphous is terrible I hope they stop selling it because it's junk okay the monocrystalline is good the monocrystalline is probably made in the same factory that Bouge RV and those makes theirs um, you know so if the monocrystalline panel is actually pretty excellent I would tell you it um, the monocrystalline panel it comes with a nice aluminum frame it's um, it produces over a hundred watts I think this is a hundred twenty watt panel that they rated at a hundred watts um, and then um, they actually um, they sold it. They actually tell you, and they they all they put sort of, um, um, you know, they actually they actually put all sorts of um, disclaimers saying don't run these panels in series. But they come with the blocking and bypass diodes anyway. So um, why can you charge home DIY? No, you can't use the DC port right now. They have a data portion to that port. So um, just to clarify, um, amorphous panels themselves aren't really junk. The Harbor Freight implementation is because they put it in this flimsy little um, thin plastic housing that seems very fragile. Okay, that is not the um, mosquitoes. That is not the um, you know it's not it's not a not a reflection of the technology. It's a reflection of their implementation. So, um, you know, I think that they should stop selling that panel because it's very fragile. I actually saw these in the wild and they were kind of like, you know, bowing when people held it up. Uh, so, the Xfinity port takes 120 volts 
uh, the Infinity Port Xfinity. Xfinity is a cable company. The Infinity Port takes um, uh, no, it takes 240 volts. I believe you can you can you can put in 120 volts in there because it just goes to the same charger and the charger is a switching power supply anyway. So yeah, you can do 120 through there. I don't know if they have anything configured for that right now. I believe it can support level one charging. Um, so do I have the charger with me? Yeah, so, um, yeah, so the J1772, yeah, it does, but I notice, um, some, so, here's the problem, so this is the adapter they give you, right, well, that you buy, this has the infinity on one end, and it has the J-plug, J1772 on the other end, right, see this, okay, and this all, you know, neutral line, okay, etc., you can um, charge um, the Delta Pro with most um, J1772. I actually char tried it at a charge point down at a um, town park in Sparta here. I don't know for sure. Yes, yes. So I'll tell you, J1772 is both 120 and 240, level 1 and level 2. I have not tried this with... A level one charger I don't know if it'll work I mean I know the spec says it'll work but I don't know if it'll work because there are some older EVSEs like Steve um, from the moderator team he tried his and his has a timing issue where it does not work on his but it does not work it works on public charge points I've tried it works on electrify America level two charging um, I have this here to charge another EV Right? I have my Tesla, but I also charge other EVs. I drive other EVs too. And this here doesn't actually work with this. I don't know for what reason. This is a Tesla tap, which allows you to take your Tesla. Um, the Tesla plug and put it in here. Now, I don't know why. I suspect it's because while Tesla adapter is based on J1772, the Tesla ch um, AC charging protocol, I don't really think that it's um, it's fully compatible. I think there is some sort of switching involved because what Tesla Tap tells you is that you need to plug in Tesla Tap first and then wait 30 seconds before plugging into the EV. I don't know. I have to find out. I'm, you know. I might, I might need to research this with engineering. It might be a firmware update or something. This here is a Tesla tap, okay? Yes, this is Tesla to J1772. See, that's right. This is the Tesla tap mini. And this works actually. You could charge something like a Nissan Leaf or even a plug-in hybrid with a Tesla wall connector. You know, like some places they have destination charging. You plug that in there. And you plug that other one. Yep, that is the Tesla Top Mini. Yeah, they have it at, um, I believe it's at quickchargepower.com or something like that. Um, you know, uh, but they're nice. They work. Um, QCcharge.com is it? Uh, shop um, no I don't think it's there but if you look for Tesla tap mini right um, he has it there he has uh, the low amp and the high amp versions so you know yeah I know you, you have a lot of EVs and stuff so anyway um, just to update you on smart generator progress here I'm gonna shut down soon because I need to, to go and do some stuff uh, okay so here it's steadily charging and um, the Wi-Fi is not so good out here for EcoFlow Delta Pro, but maybe I'll go to the front of the unit and look. Let's stay look. 
Yep. And you could charge e-bikes and stuff for that too. See here. So now it's at like 16%. Right? And this is steadily going here. You see here on the app, it's showing, you know, 16%. Anyway, um, the Delta Pro Cord is um, five meters. It's 15, sorry, uh, yeah, 15 feet or so. So it's not 40 feet, unfortunately, it's 15 feet. Um, I asked about extension cord and, and they were, you know, they didn't really say anything about that. So anyway, what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna go in my app here okay well first of all yeah and then I'm gonna shut down Delta the smart generator Wi-Fi might be preventing me from doing that that's odd okay. there we go it's off okay bang okay and now I go to turn it off because it might start up again okay off Oof. okay off you turn that off that turns off fuel and that turns off the electronics and then once you do that you could disconnect and you let it cool down okay um, yeah, you know, you'll probably need a high high gauge extension cord. The internals, I don't know if you did any tear down yet, but it's 48, the internals is 48 volts. So er everything runs at 48 volts. All right, guys, um, thank you. This was a good stream. Unfortunately, I got um, things to do. So be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you around next time. You know what? Even though the campaign is over, um, ask more questions in the community. And I'll think up more live streams. I want to do definitely do a live stream showing the solar panel performance. Because really this thing is going to retail soon. And you know people want to know. So you know I want you guys to come back. And, and um, you know we talk more about this. And for my ham radio friends too. If you have any questions too. You know this is primarily a, a, fr a ham radio channel. But we do other technology prepping and disaster stuff. Okay. Alright. Take care guys. Um, this is Ria. And to RJ. Bye bye.